leading to any of the kind of abuses people talked about. Now, one of the things that's interesting is that opponents of this sometimes say that uh, it's some deep, dark pot. Uh, many of them think it is a deep, dark pot to make some of them like some of us. Let me say at the outset that uh, my indifference to whether a lot of these people think well of me or not uh, cannot be overestimated. <laughs> this has nothing to do with seeking anybody's approval. It is seeking people's right to be able to get a job, to get promoted, to be treated on the job based solely on job performance. Now the argument that this is really some plot uh, is a convoluted one. It builds, in fact, on an implicit acknowledgement of how fair this is. Because many people will say, oh, but that's already the law, so they don't need this. Why are they trying to pass it? It is, of course, not the law. Absent an affirmative statute, there is no protection against being fired because of your sexual orientation in America, even by the public sector. We have not yet had a decision from a federal court protecting people in the public sector, and certainly not even close in the private sector. They have then said, oh, well, this is all about affirmative action. This bill explicitly disavows affirmative action. And there was a very relevant argument. I want to quote uh, a former colleague of ours, Congressman Tom Campbell, a very distinguished lawyer, law professor, and economist. When we dealt with this in the context of the federal employment situation, and some of the conservatives who were opposed to it said, well, this is really, if you do this, it's the same as affirmative <coughs> action. And he stood up and he said, look, as someone who has been against affirmative action, I have to make clear how damaging your argument is. Because those of us who have been opposed to affirmative action, as Tom Campbell was in many contexts, have argued that it's not a license for discrimination. And he said, if we don't agree that there's a line between affirmative action and discrimination, we'll undercut our anti-affirmative action arguments. Now, I'm a supporter of affirmative action in many contexts. But in this bill, it quite explicitly disavows that because it's a different set of remedies. It's very straightforward. It says that when you go to work, when you apply for a job or are judged at the job, you are judged solely on your abilities and not on any prejudice. Now, I'm going to turn this over. Could we get people to move up further here? I, you're blocking people out. There's a chair here. Somebody come and sit in it. Let's get everybody, please, uh, to, to, uh, to uh, I guess I will be reversing the usual direction, and I'm going to beg everybody to come in. <laughs> uh, with that, I want to turn this over to uh, the uh, lead co-sponsor, uh, a woman who I am very pleased to serve with on the Financial Services Committee, who has been a leader in uh, the Republican Party. We do try to make this as bipartisan as possible. Congresswoman Deb Price from Ohio. And we're joined by another co-sponsor, Chris Shays, and who has um, worked on this issue in the past as, and has helped to lay significant groundwork uh, for today's bill, which is in, by no means revolutionary in its philosophy. In a country that thrives and is built around a work ethic where we are born and bred learning how important it is to go to work every day, to pay our taxes, to be good upstanding citizens, to have 33 states stand in the way of some people who want to do nothing more than that is what this bill will correct. It wasn't put together lightly. Enormous amounts of work went into this. We have talked to people who have been discriminated against. We have talked to employers who have had lawsuits. We have talked to employers who need direction. Two of the biggest employers in my district, Nationwide and The Limited, are big supporters of this type of legislation. 90% of America's Fortune 500 companies have policies in place similar to this. This is the American way, and I'm proud to be a part of it. Thank you. Next, one of the national leaders in this and uh, someone who has uh, claimed the first dibs because she represents the state of Wisconsin as well as representing all of us, uh, my colleague, Tammy Baldwin. Thank you. 
Thank you, Barney. I am delighted to join my colleagues who are uh, co-sponsors, original co-sponsors um, of ENDA on the day of its introduction and just wanted to say a few words, first of all, in terms of historical context because it was more than 40 years ago that Congress enacted the Civil Rights Act of 1964, Title VII of which banned employment discrimination in certain circumstances. And Congress did this based upon a clear and abundant record that employers uh, were judging employees by factors unrelated, wholly unrelated, to their work performance, their skills, and abilities. And so at that point, we articulated as a nation that when there are uh, acts of discrimination in employment, where the employer judgments are based on issues or, and, and characteristics such as race, color, religion, sex, or national origin, that these discriminatory, discriminatory decisions should be unlawful. Today, we can also point to a clear and abundant record of instances of employment discrimination based on additional factors wholly, again, wholly unrelated to job performance, skills, and ability. And it is high time that we as a nation declare uh, employment discrimination based on sexual orientation and gender identity to be unlawful, too. Uh, I might add that in 1990, we added uh, disability uh, uh, employment discrimination provisions when we passed the ADA. Now, there's been a couple of references to my home state of Wisconsin. I could not be more proud to come from the state that was the first state to add sexual orientation to its employment uh, non-discrimination statutes. Uh, we actually just a couple weeks ago celebrated the quarter century mark of that law, and it was quite something, because that too was a bipartisan effort. It passed both houses of the state legislature based on votes from both parties and was signed into law by a Republican governor. And I note that because of the place we are right now in our nation's political history. Our Republican governor at the time signed the bill, and in part his remarks cited the success of municipal ordinances on the same topic throughout the state and also private corporate policies that had served those communities and those companies well and he felt the same would occur in the case of our state. I would also add that before I became um, uh, a full-time practitioner of politics, I was in the full-time practice of law and had a chance as a young lawyer to use the Wisconsin statute and see justice uh, provided in numerous cases. These cases are real, the stories are painful, and it is high time that as a nation we make this declaration. Lastly, and I, I expect other uh, speakers will comment on this, but there are strong economic reasons that we need to be engaged in passing and uh, we want to see our, our country succeed in a global economy. We know we must retain and maintain the most competitive workforce in the world and policies like ENDA at the national level help us achieve that goal. Uh, again, I couldn't be de more delighted to join my colleagues in reintroducing ENDA today. And, uh Next, Joe Salmonese, who's the president of the Human Rights Campaign. Thank you, Congressman Frank, Price, Baldwin, Shays, and Congressman Nadler for your strong support on this issue. My name is Joe Salmonese. I'm the president of the Human Rights Campaign, which is the largest gay, lesbian, bisexual, and transgender advocacy organization in the country. You know, I'm, I'm inspired when I think that it was in 1974 that the first piece of legislation banning discrimination against our community was introduced by Congresswoman Bella Abzug of New York. Uh, she introduced it because she understood that GLBT Americans had a great deal to contribute to our country and that they wanted to have the same American experience as everyone else. Oddly, it was a radical notion, but it was 1974. Today, nearly 90% of Americans believe that gay, lesbian, bisexual, and transgender Americans should have the same work experience, and they support the, the Employment Non-Discrimination Act. Across the board, a majority of Americans believe employment decisions should be based on a person's qualifications and their work ethic, and it goes against our fundamental American values to fire someone simply because of who they are. Many of America's corporate leaders understand this as well. And they also understand that a workplace free of discrimination is good for business and good for America. 
Absent any federal mandate, the human rights campaign has spent more than a decade working with corporate America to implement their own inclusive policies with our community. Most of corporate America now understands that the policies embodied in ENDA make them better companies. Today, an overwhelming number of Fortune 500 companies prohibit discrimination based on sexual orientation, and a growing number include gender identity. As of March 2007, nearly 90% of Fortune 500 corporations include sexual orientation in their non-discrimination policies, and a quarter of Fortune 500 companies include gender identity. However, today in 33 states, it is still legal to fire someone who is otherwise qualified simply because of his or her sexual orientation, and that is also true in 42 states based on gender identity. We have been asking Congress to rectify this problem, and for too long, our pleas have fallen victim to partisan politics. Now, with fair-minded leaders among us this afternoon, we have the best opportunity that we have had in years to achieve congressional action on this critical legislation. Representatives Frank, Price, Baldwin, Shays, Nadler are going to have a unique window of opportunity to move this legislation forward, and the Human Rights Campaign will work tirelessly with them to make sure that that happens. And when it does, America will be stronger. We'll be stronger because millions of Americans will have greater economic security in their workplace, and by passing the Employment Non-Discrimination Act, we will be adding another proud chapter to the American story of opportunity. Thank you. Next, since I've been... Uh Stressing history and have acknowledged the role of Wisconsin, I want to acknowledge the uh, role of the congressional district of our next speaker, who has himself, of course, been a uh, ceaseless fighter for human rights, uh, and not inappropriately, since uh, he does represent much of the area that Bell Obzug once represented, Congressman Jerry Nadler. Thank you very much, and I do rep indeed represent uh, the district that Bella used to represent, and it's a great uh, honor to do so. And I'm pleased to be joining in the reintroduction of ENDA, the Employment Non-Discrimination Act. This act simply takes the American values of fairness and equality and seeks to place them into law. Workers should be judged in their job performance and not be subject to prejudice or bias. Every individual, these are core American values there ought to be, every individual should be able to work and contribute to society without fear that they will be discriminated against for their sexual orientation, their gender identity, or their gender expression. Singling out gay, lesbian, bisexual, or transgender employees is unfair and unacceptable. Most of America's largest corporations, and indeed most Americans, already recognize this fundamental value. But Congress needs to act because there are still too many locations, including 33 states, where such deplorable acts are still perfectly legal. In our America, who you are should not be a factor in your employment. There are people, we will hear from some of the conservatives and some others, will conjure up, as Barney said, all kinds of horrible scenarios or imaginatory things about, my God, what will happen here. And when they do, I will remember an incident that occurred a few years ago when New York was about to, uh, when the New York legislature was about to consider SANDA, the state, I forget what SANDA stood for, but Non-Discrimination Act. It was, it was a state version of ENDA, which was passed in 2002 or three. And someone came to me, a constituent who was very anti uh, this legislation, and said, my God, this may pass. What are we going to do? And I said to him, I said, were you present in the city council chamber in 1986 protesting the 1986 proposed passage of citywide New York City legislation doing this? He says, yes, it was terrible. I said, do you remember what happened? He said, no, what happened? I said, it passed. Have you noticed any difference? Has it affected your life negatively in any way? Has it affected the state negatively in any way? I said, so we're now going to do on a statewide basis what we did in the city in which you have no cause to complain about. And he just looked at me because he couldn't say anything. And the fact of the matter is, in 27 states, we have this legislation on the books. In innumerable cities and counties in the other 33 states, we have this on the books. 90% of American corporations do it. It's elementary fairness. Not one single person in this country will have any legitimate complaint about it, and it's far past time to recognize elementary fairness and pass this legislation. Thank you. And now uh, another one of our Republican colleagues who has been a consistent, staunch supporter of fairness uh, based on sexual orientation, gender identity, kind of appreciation. I was very surprised when I walked into HC9 ready for a press conference and it wasn't there. I'm sorry to be late. 
I, um, I want a gentler world. I want a world where people are nicer to each other, more respectful. I want a more moral world. Uh, and this legislation meets all those needs. I um, could never understand why one of my favorite teachers, someone who uh, helped me love this country, helped me want to serve uh, in, in government, I could never understand why every weekend he went down from Darien, Connecticut to Washington, D.C. I could never understand it. I mean, every weekend. Well, that's where his partner was. Uh, that's where he and his partner felt safe because they didn't necessarily feel safe uh, in a community, oh, how many years ago? <laughs> many years ago, more than 40, where someone would uh, say, why are you living with that man? You know, these are questions that are so irrelevant. The bottom line for me is that uh, I, I, I believe with all my heart and soul that this legislation makes sense. <clears throat> I believe we'll be a better, uh, better country uh, when we pass it. Uh, and uh, I think that it's becoming more evident to individuals each and every day. It will happen. Uh, we'd like it to happen sooner rather than later, but it will happen. Uh, it's the right thing to do. It's the moral thing to do. Uh, we'll be a better country because of it, and we'll be a gentler place. <laughs> and now uh, we next are joined, and we are delighted to, by uh, the Reverend Dr. Dennis Wiley from Covenant Baptist Church here in Washington, D.C. My name is Reverend Dennis W. Wiley, and I come to you today in support of the Employment Non-Discrimination Act and uh, as pastor of Covenant Baptist Church, a black Baptist church in the inner city of Washington, D.C., located in Ward 8, the ward with the highest rates of poverty, unemployment, and HIV and AIDS in our city. Our church has a rich history not only of serving our community, but also of welcoming our community into our fellowship. As some and as such, I come with a unique appreciation for how class, culture, race, religion, age, gender, disability, sexual orientation, and other socioeconomic factors often intersect to place certain human beings at an extreme disadvantage in comparison with other human beings. In a church, then, in which we proudly and unashamedly affirm our African heritage, we have adopted a vision of radical inclusion because we believe that all of God's children are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, and that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. These immortal words from our nation's own Declaration of Independence remind us just how hypocritical government, society, and even the Christian church can sometimes be when we preach one thing and practice another. My question for you today is how could you consider not passing this bill if it will help to protect the citizens of this country from discrimination and ensure that all enjoy the right to work, to earn a living, to provide for themselves and their families, and to realize their full God-given potential. Howard Thurman, the great African-American preacher, teacher, and author, once wrote, I have always wanted to be me without making it difficult for you to be you. Our nation has painfully experienced the tragic consequences when anyone determines to limit, stifle, or destroy the potential of another. Not only do the victims suffer, but indeed all of us suffer, including the perpetrators. I know something about this because as a black man in America, I have experienced firsthand the injustice of being discriminated against, not because of what I could do, but simply because of who I am. Consequently, I made up my mind a long time ago that I would never intentionally oppress others in the manner in which I myself have been oppressed. For as Martin Luther King Jr. once said, injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. 
As we have welcomed same gender loving persons into our congregation, we have felt the pain that they feel of having to conceal their identity on their jobs, in their schools, in their faith communities, and even in their homes. We have also felt the sense of joy, fulfillment, and empowerment they feel when they are free to function in an environment where they are not judged because of their sexual identity, but are celebrated because they are a gift to the world. And although our church has come under attack by conservative Christians who have condemned all homosexuals to hell, we have found them to be some of the most committed, talented, and dedicated members of our church family. In her memorable message to the grief-stricken community of Virginia Tech, exactly one week ago today, the poet Nikki Giovanni said, no one deserves a tragedy. With that powerful message and that deadly tragedy still resounding in our heads and hearts, I urge you to pass the Employment Non-Discrimination Act because it is equally true that no one deserves discrimination. Thank you. We have two best speakers who between them represent the great uh, sectors of the American economy, as uh, been noted by uh, Tammy and Joe Solomon, these and others. Uh, corporate America is, in this instance, way ahead of the public uh, of the public sector, and understands the importance uh, of picking people according to their talents, especially in those leading edges, uh, those companies at the leading edge. And we're very pleased to have with us Stephen Kies, who was the uh, vice president for uh, compensation benefits and uh, human resources policy uh, nationwide. Thank you, Chairman Frank, uh, Representative Price from our hometown of Columbus, Ohio, um, and uh, Representative Shaves Baldwin and Nadler. Um, on behalf of Nationwide Chief Executive Jerry Jurgensen uh, and all 36,000 uh, Nationwide Associates, it's our pleasure to be here today. Uh, for most of you who know, Nationwide uh, is a leader in the insurance and financial services industry uh, with its headquarters based in Columbus, Ohio. Um, we're here today to support federal um, workplace non-discrimination legislation that would extend basic job protections to gay, lesbian, bisexual, and transgender Americans. Nationwide has a long-standing history as a company that's committed to fostering a workplace environment of inclusion, respect, and non-discrimination. In fact, Nationwide was named to the Human Rights Campaign's annual list of the best places to work for gay, lesbian, bisexual, and transgender equality. At Nationwide, we're guided by a core set of values, which include valuing people and trusting and respecting each other. We embrace diversity and inclusion and the value of every individual. Um, all of our associates, regardless of sexual orientation or gender identity, feel that they are equally protected and valued by the company. It's our responsibility as an employer to do everything we can to create a welcoming work environment. We educate our associates about our policies and about diversity through training and open communication. Nationwide's Equal Employment Opportunity Non-Discrimination and Harassment Policy specifically state that we will not tolerate discrimination or harassment of any associate based on sexual orientation or gender identity, and they have long said, said as much. These policies are an important part of our business objectives. Having a corporate culture that embraces diversity, improves the productivity of our associates, helps the company recruit the best talent, and makes Nationwide more competitive in the insurance and financial services industry. Our culture gives us that advantage because our associates have an environment uh, that allows them to do their best work without worry or threat of discrimination. This legislation ENDA would simply and fairly extend the fundamental right to be judged on one's own merits without placing excessive burden, burdens on employers. The act merely embodies the principle of non-discrimination that already enjoys the wide support of the American people. After a thorough analysis of its provisions, we as an employer are convinced that the Employment Non-Discrimination Act is an appropriate, low-cost measure that will have positive impact on our country by extending protection in the majority of New U.S. states where it re still remains legal to fire employees based on sexual orientation or gender identity. The Employment Non-Discrimination Act will create more workplaces na like Nationwide's. It's the right thing to do and the right time to do it. We are proud to be here today to stand with other major employers for the future of the American workforce. 
We congratulate the bill's bipartisan co-sponsors, including Congresswoman Deborah Price, who represents part of Columbus, Ohio, as I said, the home to our corporate headquarters. Nationwide urges Congress to join Chairman Frank, Representatives Price, Shays, Baldwin, and Nadler, the Human Rights Campaign, and companies here today in support of the Employment Non-Discrimination Act. Thank you. Now, reflective of the fact that there is no serious effort to achieve social justice in America that could go forward without the support of organized labor, we are very pleased to have joining with us Rosalind Pels, who is the Director of Civil, Human, and Women's Rights at the AFL-CIO. Thank you. I bring greetings and support from the AFL-CIO President, President John Sweeney, and from Richard Trumka and from Linda Chavez-Thompson. I am proud to stand today with my lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender brothers and sisters, in particular members of Pride at Work, the constituency group for, L for LGBT workers, as this important piece of civil rights legislation, the Employment Non-Discrimination Act, is introduced. The AFL-CIO and the labor movement in the United States has a long history of supporting the labor of workers, not because of who they are, but because of the work that they do. The AFL-CIO believes in equal pay for equal work, and we stand against employment discrimination of any kind. We believe that all workers should have dignity, respect, and full equality on the job. For that reason, the AFL-CIO, representing 54 national and international unions and over 10 million working people, wholeheartedly endorses and calls for an immediate passage of the Employment Non-Discrimination Act. The AFL-CIO is proud of its work with Congress, the civil rights community, and the LGBT, LGBT community to make INDA a truly inclusive and encompassing bill a bill that protects all in the LGBT community, including our transgender brothers and sisters. We call on Congress to pass INDA in its current inclusive form. In far too many states, it is still absolutely legal to fire someone because of their sexual orientation, gender identity, or expression. This is deplorable, yet, legal, yet it is legal. This practice must end. The AFL-CIO strongly believes that discrimination based on sexual orientation and, general and gender identity and expression is inconsistent with the principles of equal opportunity and equal employment that our movement has fought for so long. Over 30 years, unions across the country have been doing what federal and state governments have failed to do, protecting through their union contracts lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender workers from workplace discrimination. Through our constituency group, Pride at Work, the AFL-CIO sees daily the ugly effect of workplace discrimination. Firings, job demotions, and lack of ex access to employment promotions are unfortunately commonplace for many LGBT working families. If passed, INDA would provide LGBT workers with federal protection from workplace discrimination, protection that so many receive now only through their union contract. The passage of INDA is long overdue. The AFL-CIO calls on Congress to pass this bill and ultimately for President Bush to sign it. The AFL-CIO strongly puts the weight of its 10 million members, 54 national and international unions, and political apparatus into the passage of this important piece of civil rights legislation. I am proud to echo the AFL-CIO in saying not another day. Not another day where a lesbian worker can be fired just for being who she is. Not another day where a transgendered worker can't even get an interview to apply for a job. Not another day where a gay man can't put a picture of his partner uh, in his work area for fear of retaliation. Not another day. The AFL-CIO implores, implores Congress to pass the Employment Non-Discrimination Act. Thank you. Any, uh... To anticipate questioning, uh, some of you know the uh, hate crimes bill is being considered. Uh, Tammy's been working on this in the Judiciary Committee, and to our great good fortune, Tammy's been returned to the Judiciary Committee, and we expect to be uh, seeing the hate crimes bill on the floor soon. Uh, Ender will be coming later in the year, but it is definitely coming to the floor this year. That was a commitment that uh, Speaker-elect Pelosi and Majority Leader Hoyer made in a meeting with Tammy and myself in December. It has never wavered. I know there are people who have claimed it was wavering. 
presumably so they can then take credit for it not having wavered when it never was going to in the first place. <laughs> they, they are entitled to it, but uh, there has never been any doubt that uh, that will be the sequence. We will be dealing with hate crimes, and then we will be dealing with, uh, uh, with ENDA. And uh, also, of course, whether you've noticed that we will not be dealing with a constitutional amendment to ban same-sex marriage. That will not be coming up. Um, we're now available for uh, any questions.